So, um, I'm Doug Cockle. I'm an actor, mostly known for that guy up there, Girl to Rivia. <laughs> uh, but I've been doing uh, voice over acting for games since 1999. Um, lots and lots of different titles, triple A's, indies, and everything in between. Well, one of the things that's been so wonderful about being involved in the Witcher series is that um, it's, it's actually quite rare for actors to be associated with a character for 10, 11, 12 years, whatever it was. Um, so I went on a journey with Geralt, and um, I've, I've said in various other interviews and things that, um, you know, he started out as unemotional, and then in Witcher 2 he was a little bit more emotional, and then in Witcher 3, by the end, you get to the end of Witcher 3 and Blood and Wine, and he's like a different character. But it kind of kind of reflects life in a way, you know. That as we grow older, we, you know, we we understand more about ourselves, our world, everything else. I, I think I've described it as having to be a little bit like a, a, an emotional acrobat, because whereas in a in a in a play or a film or a television show or something like that, even though you might be shooting out of sequence, um, or rehearsing out of sequence, or you know whatever it is. Um, there is a there is a linear story to be told um, and with games you could be recording something quite far into the game and there are several branches that are affected by branches that come before um, so um, and this is where it becomes very important as an actor to have a director who is very familiar with how the game starts and evolves When I went into Witcher 3, uh, I knew the character. I knew the character very well. Um, and that only increased as we, as we continued to record into the DLCs. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that understanding of that character informs my job in the storytelling process. So that, that, you know, the, a depth of understanding of a character allows a depth of, of um, performance that isn't achieved as easily or readily if you've just met the character. I find that the, the best choices that I have to make as a player are the ones where there is something at stake. You know that one choice is, that, that if you have three different choices, each choice is going to have a consequence that you cannot come back from. Go away or I'll kill you. There's always an element of tension, isn't there? Mm. There has to be, otherwise yeah. it's not a story. You let me go, and they might live and fight once more for a free North. I'm taking you to the Nelf Guardians. You're a murderer, not a soldier. And you're a traitor. There's a scaffold out there with your name on it. In Witcher 3, the... The choice that I found uh, most difficult was, uh, was whether to give Ciri over to Emperor Amir or not. I think that was, that was one of those choices, and this is when I played it, not when I recorded it. That was one of those choices where I had to stop and really go, wow, well, what's going to be best for Ciri? And that's a really interesting choice to come up against in a game, you know, that kind of power, you know, I have kids, so any, any of you have, who have kids, you know, whether they're yours or not, if you care about them, making decisions that directly affect someone you love, those are the hardest, those are the most difficult, so that one, that one I think stands out for me as a choice that had to be made that I had to really mull over. It's a bit like life, really, isn't it? Mm -hmm. if, you, if you play through a game once and you have allowed yourself to become involved in the story and the characters and their lives and everything else, you can't really replay it in the same way that you can't really replay life. Yeah. Um, that moment's gone. Yeah, yeah, um, exactly. So, and that's what makes the storytelling game so different from any other medium. Um, it, it's, it, you know, you do have agency. Mm. Um, and the choices you make do have consequences, and that's just like what we... It, it's kind of like having a wonderfully safe, horrible playground. 
<laughs> you know, I mean, we, we, we know that we're not going to be harmed by the events that are unfolding in front of us. But unlike a novel or a film or television, which are all great, um, you can die. Um, and if you're immersed in this world and you die, and it's, it's really upsetting. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you can experience things in games that you just can't experience in other mediums.